Hello everybody, my name is Kirby. Today we're going to have something a little bit, pretty much the same as what we had in the previous episode, but it's not really the same. The special ingredient that we have today is this. Well, this is called a rainbow trout. Okay everybody, the special ingredient that we have today is this. This is called a rainbow trout. If you think that this species looks familiar, the scientific name for this fish is actually the same scientific name as one of the previous episodes we have, which is the field trout. And that scientific name is actually called the Onchitrius mykis. I mean, come to think of it, most of all of the Atlantic salmon and field trout actually comes from Norway. But this fish is actually not from Norway. This fish is actually from Turkey. I do see some people in the medicine market which sold this rainbow trout before. But the thing is this, they actually market the fish as a baby salmon. When I actually did the research on it, I heard that this fish, which is actually in a size of like 250 grams plus plus, this is actually the adult form of the fish. And I've also heard that a lot of people, when they go out to the riverside and do some fishing, they actually catch this rainbow trout by a lot. With all that said, now let's take a look at the fish, shall we? From what you can touch right here, you can actually feel that fish here, it was actually frozen really, really nicely and it's kind of fresh. Pretty much the same way as what I feel in the beard straw. I can feel that this fish is actually really, really, really slimy. You can actually slide the fish around the chopping board like that. As what the farmer actually gutted the inside here, you can see that they actually removed the gills and the intestines and the lungs, liver and whatever. I can say that the rainbow trout's skin colour is actually quite similar with the for short, but what I really really wonder is what the meat inside here actually looks like. Let's take a look at the other one. Okay, let's see. You can see actually some parts here is going to have like some bloody spots inside, but oh well. Well, overall it looks just like a typical fish. Uh, let's see what the head here says. Okay, this is pretty much okay. The fins are actually kind of soft as well. And there's pretty much nothing more to say about the fish because it looks totally, totally like a normal fish. From what I've done with the research, rainbow trout is actually quite a versatile fish as well. To be straightforward and honest, I can say that I don't see the logic behind using the rainbow trout to actually make things like sashimi. But I do know that this fish is actually being used to do a lot of number of different kinds of cooking such as steam, bake, boil or smoke. And today, what I plan to do with these two different fishes is I'm actually going to cook it in two different styles. I'm going to cook one of these fish into a lemon pepper fish and the other fish, I'm going to try making it a Chinese plus Japanese style. Well then, let's get this started. The first thing that we are going to have to do with the fish is to descale the fish. Alright. The scales are actually quite as small and soft. What it's like. You can actually see the colour difference between two different rainbow trots, one distilled and one still. Now that the scaling is done, I want to serve this fish as a whole. But, so now since that the fish is actually already gutted and the gills taken out, the amount of cutting work that I'm going to do with the fish is actually quite little. Well, here we go, I'm taking off my debut knife. Well, after you scale the fish, the fish is pretty much uh, kind of like not so slippery anymore. Well, kind of obvious. If you actually feel that the fish is a little bit slippery, you have to actually wash all the mucus off from the fish. So, this fish, I'm going to pocket the fish so that I can show lemon butter inside here. The job is actually quite easy. Just take the fish. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut the fish from here until this part here in the middle. That's all. Here is what you can actually see through the meat of the trout. Well, what makes the fierce trout actually quite popular in Malaysia is this nice, sweet, marbling, red colour. But the rainbow trout here that I can see is actually a little bit different. It's not really red in the inside, it's actually like orange. Now about the other fish which I'm going to turn it into a Chinese-Japanese style steam fish. Hmm, let's see. I'm going to remove the spine out from this fish. So to do that, I have to cut everything here, remove, all the bones out. Okay, and now I'm just going to cut here. So I'll turn the fish around. I'm going to cut on the top of the spine here. I'm going to cut the 
this bone out and I'm going to cut this part of the bone out. Pretty much this will do. Now here we have it, a butterfly rainbow trout. So this is the rainbow trout bones. I'm going to use this to make the stock for the fish later. So I won't throw it away yet. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my lemon pepper seasoning. I'm going to start with some butter. Needless to say, lemon pepper has to have lemon and pepper. Maybe a quarter of lemon zest inside here. This should be enough. A quarter amount of lemon juice. And I'll save some slices of lemon here. And this last piece of lemon is actually for garnish. Put this aside. The next ingredient is going to be pepper. So you're going to have to freeze some fresh grated pepper inside. I'll use a pinch of salt here. And I'll need a certain amount of garlic. Garlic goes into the butter. And all I have to do now is mix. This is the lemon pepper seasoning. Now, back to the fish. I got some marjoram right here. I'm going to show a rich amount of marjoram inside here. And some lemon wedges as well. I'm going to do the same for the belly butt. More marjoram. This is the lemon pepper butter. I'm putting a rich amount of butter inside here. And here also. This is actually ready to be popped into the oven. But before that, I'm going to start making some garnish. Let's start with approximately around three pieces of chat potato. And the next thing we're going to have is going to be asparagus. How do you know which part is actually the edible part and which part is actually the stalky part? All you have to do is just do this. This is edible. This is pretty much used for stock. Next. Chat potato goes into whole water and some amount of salt. At the same time, I'm just going to poach this asparagus as well. Probably you need around like 30 seconds to 1 minute. Now I'm going to strain all of this. The potato is pretty much half cooked at the moment. So I'm just going to take all the potatoes here. So you're just going to crush it something like... Next thing we're going to do, we're just going to place some hot potatoes over here on the iron skillet. A several amount of asparagus, a sprinkle amount of salt, last but not least, our marinated rainbow trout. I'm going to drizzle a small amount of olive oil. As a bonus, I'll be using my remaining lemon butter. This goes into the oven, 250 Celsius. For the next part, we are actually going to make our steamed rainbow trout. Like most of all Chinese steamed fish dishes, we're going to have three main components when steaming the fish. Young ginger, grinded leaf for garnish, and spring onion to steam together with the fish. So now let's get this started. The first thing we're going to have to do, we're going to do something a little bit different. This is the coriander leaf fruit. It actually has a certain amount of strong flavour inside here and we're not going to leave it to waste. I'm going to use this to make the sauce later. Well then, Done. Next, we have the young ginger here. This ginger is actually already washed and it's kind of clean and plus it's a young ginger. The flavour of this thing is a little bit, well, kind of strong and I don't really need to peel off the skin. So... And finally, the spring onion. Well, first thing we do, I'm going to cut spring onion into sizes. This is all I need to do with the spring onion. I'm just going to put two pieces of chopstick here. It does not have to be like any specific location, it's just so that the fish doesn't stick on a bowl after it's cooked. Put some ginger here, and some spring onions, and finally my fish. I'm going to put some ginger on top as well. So I'm just going to pop this into a steamer, that's all. Now we're going to start making our sauce. First, we're going to heat up some cooking oil, chopped garlic. Next, a dash of soy sauce, cooking sake, Japanese mirin, coriander root leaf, rainbow truck bone, 
maybe around a significant amount of sugar a tiny 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 bit of Maggi seasoning and last but not least water so after you bring this to the boil, the sauce will be a really nice sweet and savoury kind of sauce which is suitable for the fish. Now that the thing is boiling, the sauce is ready. 10 minutes has passed, so the fish should be cooked by now. Okay, here we go. Well, I can say that both dishes actually looks really 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 appetizing. This one looks really really nice in the Chinese style. I can say that this rainbow trout, if you serve this in a Chinese restaurant, you can only serve it for like a portion of two. So I don't think this fish is going to be suitable for a Chinese dish. This dish looks really really appetizing from my side, but I wish I actually added a little bit more colour into it. I want to start by eating this fish. Like all fishes, the first thing you have to do is just add a little bit lemon. Actually not a little bit, like a lot. Moment of truth, let's see what it tastes like. Let's see here. We oh, can smell a very, very nice aroma on it. And the skin seems a little bit very gummy. Okay, now I'm gonna eat it with the skin and everything. Let's see what happens. It doesn't have the fishy flavor at all. The skin is like gummy, but it's actually edible. Now I think I know why that when people smoke rainbow trout, they actually smoke together with the scale because the skin itself is a little bit very, it's like rubber. It doesn't break in your mouth or anything. Taste some asparagus. Hmm, not bad actually. The flavor of the fish actually stacks really well with asparagus. With the lemon butter that's covering everywhere around the potatoes and the asparagus, it actually is really good. I mean, for a fish that I really have no expectations on what this fish is going to be, it's definitely better than our local fish. It has a really nice moist texture in the inside. Doesn't taste like salmon or shark at all. Tastes similar with... Hmm... Well, I can't... Let me, hold on a second, let me, let me try again. It has a total different flavour. I don't know what this fish actually tastes like but it has this distinctive texture and flavour of its own. I can say it's really really not bad. This fish is definitely worth to give it a try. If you're actually curious about what this fish tastes like, just try it. You'll probably like it for the experience. Not the best fish, but if you ask me to rate this fish out of 10, I'll give it a 7. But remember, this fish, although it has the same scientific name as fjord shrub or salmon, this fish doesn't taste like salmon at all. I don't know why. Overall, it's a good fish and I enjoy this dish. Moving on to the next, steam fish. So let's see what it looks like here. Wow, the texture of this steam fish doesn't really compare to the texture of other kind of steam fish that I had in Chinese restaurants. I can feel that fishes like grouper or maybe palapia also is softer than what I can feel right now. Maybe I steam too long. Let's see what this tastes like right now. Hmm. It's good, but I actually steam this together with some ginger and some spring onion. Maybe it kind of cover up all the flavor already. Right now, this fish actually tastes like baramundi. I'm just using the normal, typical Chinese cooking style. If you actually eaten a lot of Chinese food, I mean, they tend to have the habit to cover everything with ginger or spring onion or whatever. But if you ask me, overall, the fish ain't bad. Not as fantastic as this dish, to be honest. In this dish, you actually feel the lemon and everything, the garlic, the marjoram, wow. But this, this dish actually feels like it's just a normal fish. But either way, the sauce is good. Tastes like any typical Chinese sauce. Come to think of it, the skin is not as gummy as this skin. It's thick, but when you eat the skin, you don't really feel any flavor at all. You don't feel any hot texture. Okay, and here we have it, the two dishes made from rainbow trout. Well, overall I can say that, honestly speaking, I don't really like the belly part for the steamed fish because there's like way too much bones out of it. <laughs> but yeah, which fish doesn't have bones on the belly? Well, with all that said, I'm going to end my review now while I finish this meal. <laughs> well, on today's episode, we actually had rainbow trout as our test subject. My overall conclusion is that 
Um, maybe I, I kind of cooked this rainbow trout to be not so perfect. But anyways, about the big fish, I can say that the big fish is definitely really, really fantastic. Well, for restaurants or cafes or maybe fine dining restaurants, if they actually want to serve this fish, they can actually take it and serve it by one fish per portion. Despite its size, which is actually kind of like small, the price per kilo of this fish is pretty much the same price as the adult fish. Well, either way, if you ask me, I just don't see the logic on why this fish and the field trout actually has the same scientific name. But the small fish and the big fish has like total different flavor. And if you actually have the answer on why rainbow trout is actually a little bit, well, different compared to the field trout, although both of them actually has the same name on Trishua's My Kiss. Maybe you can actually leave the answer in the comments below and you'll actually make my day. Well, that's the final conclusion. I'll see you next time. If you like, comment, subscribe or share, you'll actually make my day. Well then, see you next time. Bye-bye.